Are you glad to be in church tonight? Well, I'm so happy to be here. But first of all, I want to say to you that I am here tonight to serve you. I have come not to be served, but to serve you rather. And I want to give honor to our visiting speakers, Brother Woodward and Brother Lehman, in the name of Jesus, and our superintendent, my pastor, Pastor Downs, and to all the pastors and ministers of the United Pentecostal Church of Australia. And last of all, not least, for every member of this great church, every member, I greet you in Jesus' name. I honor you tonight in Jesus' name. I feel a very special move of the Holy Ghost in this room tonight. And I am expecting God to move, to operate, and to do stuff here tonight. And if you would open up your heart and allow Jesus into your life, you can receive one of the greatest gifts, if not the greatest gift that could ever be given to you. So with that in mind, I would like to turn your attention to the Word of God. If you do have your Bibles with you tonight, if you would, John chapter number 7, verse 37, and then Revelation 22 and 17. In the last day of that feast, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not one river. The word is plural. Rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And then in Revelation 22 and 17, And the Spirit and the Bride, say come and I think that's important to us tonight just that single word come and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hears say come and let him that is a thirst come three times and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. No charge. You can have it if you want it. It's free of charge. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we give you praise tonight. We give you worship. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to operate among this people. Move mightily by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise tonight. There are three types of people in this house tonight. Those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Those that have been filled and their wells have run dry. And those who need to be filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time tonight. If you or I were invited by the queen or some other dignitary 
Would you accept that invitation? You know as well as I that if that had to occur, it would only be a select few that, were, that would receive this kind of an invitation. If you were one that was chosen to receive such an invitation, you would probably rejoice in some way or another. You would express your joyous emotions in various ways. You may run up and down. You may scream, excitedly call your friends and your neighbors and family and inform them, Hey, I've just, invited to be, I've just been invited to dine with the queen. And no doubt, this would be a wonderful experience and perhaps one to remember. You might even diarize this event as being one of a momentous occasion. And indeed, it may be good to have such an experience. I haven't had one yet, but it may be good to have one. In both of our opening texts, there is an open invitation from Jesus. And I quote tonight to, and this invitation goes out to the whosoever will. In other words, do you want it? Say that again. The invitation that is going out to you people that are in this congregation, in this auditorium, in this house tonight, it is for the whosoever will. Let him that is a thirst come. And the bride and Jesus said, come. Let him come. The invitation is out there. Come, 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 come. Because there is the water of life. That is flowing freely in this room tonight. We, we, we have this invitation to come. An invitation never implies to go. But rather, it Im the implication is come. It's a simple word. Throughout the Gospels of Jesus, He was always sending out invitations to come. Matthew 11, Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, come, come. It is for the whosoever will. He wants you to come. Amen. He said, If any man thirst, in our text, let him come unto me and drink. And furthermore, upon acceptance of this invitation, Jesus always has a blessing of His Spirit available to you. I have a two and a half year old granddaughter. And just about two weeks ago, my daughter was taking them overseas to see her grandparents and their great-grandparents. And as she left and walked down the walkway toward the plane, as they, they, they checked in and walked through, this little girl kept on turning back, and she kept on saying, Grandpa, come. Grandpa, come. You know, if I could, I would. But I hadn't paid a fare to go and just board the flight. But she kept on, she walked a little bit, and she said, come, Grandpa. Come, Grandpa. And then she would walk a little way and turn back again and say, come, come. She was inviting me to come along with them. But unfortunately, I could not accept that invitation simply because I hadn't paid the fare. But here it is tonight that Jesus is motioning us as well. I don't believe there's an individual in this house tonight that is exempt from the call, that is exempt from this motion that Jesus is saying to us tonight, come, 
Come, are you hearing the voice of the Spirit? Are you hearing the voice of the Spirit of God that is calling you tonight? He's saying, come, if you're thirsty, come. If you're sick in your body, come. Whatever you need, come. We serve a God of the infinite. We serve a glorious God. We serve a high God. Hallelujah. We serve a God whose name is Jehovah Rapha. We serve a God whose name is Jehovah Jireh. We serve serve a God whose name is Jehovah Sid Canoe. We serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. And this great God is saying, come, 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 little me. God is calling little me. And God is calling little you. I'm talking about a great God. Oh, the invitation is out there tonight, church. People, friends, if you're here tonight, the invitation is out there. The invitation is saying, come, come, come. If you're thirsty tonight, come. You know, I certainly believe. I certainly believe in divine healing. And that even if you're sick in your body tonight, you can be miraculously healed. You can be healed in your body for what, from whatsoever disease or problem or sickness that you may have in your body. God wants to heal you. God wants to touch your body. He wants to heal you from the crown of your head unto the soles of your feet. Amen. There's nobody in this room tonight that is exempt. Amen. From receiving the power of healing in this place. But more so, you know, no, Jesus, you know, the Bible says that, that he, he wants to give us these things. But divine, he, what I don't see in the word of God where the Bible said that when we receive divine healing and of healing of our diseases and of our sicknesses, where the angels rejoice as a result of these things. But the Bible does say that, oh, how the angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance. So what I'm saying to you tonight is this, is that the invitation is out there for you and I to come. And whatever your needs are tonight, you can have it, you can receive it, but you must accept it in the name of Jesus. The invitation is out there for you to come. Jesus wants you to come. And the reason... Why he is signaling to us to come is because that Jesus is waiting at the well. I don't think you got that now. I said the Lord is putting out an invitation there to you and to me to come. Because he's waiting at the well. He's waiting at the well. He's wanting to give to you the greatest gift that you could ever have. He wants to give to you the Holy Ghost. Yes, he will bring divine healing to your body. But the greatest thing that you could ever receive is the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said in his word in Joel 2 and 28, he said, it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, that I will pour out. Of my spirit. No, no, I want to stop a little bit there. I, this God. And I used to think, and maybe you can correct my theology. Yeah. I used to think that God dwells in the realms of eternity. But I can take that another step further. I can let you know tonight that, that God not only dwells in the realms of eternity, but the realms of eternity dwell in Him. For in Him, in Jesus, in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All power is in Jesus. Oh, I 
I'm talking about a God yet a night. Amen. That fools the universe. I'm talking about a God in whom the universe dwells. And the same God is saying to us, I want to pour out my spirit. Oh, I said, you could have eternity dwelling in you. You can have Jesus in your heart. You can have Jesus in your life. I've always preached that this, this Jesus that we serve, he never great gate crashes anybody's party. He always waits to be invited. But he's saying to you, He's saying to me, I'm, I'm going, you, you see, he's waiting, he's sitting down at the well, and he's waiting for you to come. He's put the invitation out there. He's called you. He's saying, come. I don't know how many times that you've been to church. I don't know how many times that you've been in the presence of the Lord. This may not be your first time, nor your second time, or it just may be that way. But whatever the case may be, the call of God is out there. And let me tell you, once God calls you, he will not take away that calling. He will keep on calling you. He will keep on calling you until you make a move until you say yes Lord yes Lord I'm coming Jesus I am coming I need you God I need the spirit of the Lord I need healing whatever it is that you need the invitation is out there for you and for me he's saying come come hallelujah Jesus is waiting at the well I guess you know what a well is. There's a doctrine that is out there called the cessationalist doctrine that believes that the apostolic dispensation of signs, wonders, and miracles is expired. They say it only happened in the day of the apostles. Well, I've got news for those believers tonight. This is the year 2015. 2,000 years later, I was and I'm still a product of the apostolic movement. I still believe in signs and wonders and miracles. I am a miracle. Amen. God has saved me. God has given me the gift of the Holy Ghost. I felt His presence there. Somebody said, how do you know that you saw God? I saw God when I stood at the seashore and I saw that the sand and the sea was still there. Somebody said again, how do you know that you saw Him? I saw Him in a rosebud. Oh, and then again, somebody also said, well, how do you know that you saw him? It's because I felt his presence there. Oh, Jesus, let's give the Lord a clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. I wasn't saved by accident. I wasn't saved by some kind of a mishap. I was saved when I walked into the midst of an apostolic one God, Jesus name church, Holy Ghost tongue talking church. Amen. I am apostolic to the core. I believe in baptism in Jesus name. I believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I believe in living a holy life. Don't tell me. That the apostolic dispensation has passed. You can feel it in this room tonight. You can feel it in this place tonight. Oh, God help me tonight. I want to say to you that the devil is fighting hard. The devil doesn't want you. He doesn't want me to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. He doesn't want you to have the joy that comes with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be void of that. And hence, this is a cessationless doctrine. But the Bible said in Hebrews 13 and 8, 
Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever because my God never changed. If they had it in the early church, they've got it in the latter day church. We've got the power of the name of Jesus. We've got divine healing. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've got what it takes, amen, to move in God. The writer of the Gospel of John initially implies in John chapter number 4 that it was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria. Could have gone another way, but the necessity was that he needed to go through Samaria. And let me tell you tonight, Jesus is waiting by the well in this room, sitting down. He's waiting. He, the, the need that he is in this house, he's in this room tonight. You, you don't see him, but you can feel his presence here. But he's waiting at the well. And he's perhaps talking to somebody tonight, perhaps more than one individual tonight. And he's saying, come, I'm sitting at the well and I'm waiting for you. When are you going to come? Ladies and gentlemen, don't wait until the service is over. They shout. Don't wait until this service is over to give God praise and glory. Don't wait to receive the Holy Ghost when the service is over. Don't wait for your healing when the service is over. But the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Jesus is waiting at the well. He's ready to, he's ready to give you the thing that you need, the thing that you desire, because he's sitting down and he's waiting. He said, I'm waiting at the well. Uh, now, Jesus sat down at the well at Sychar. And while he sat down, there comes a woman of Samaria with her, with her bucket, as it were, and she's coming to draw water. And Jesus says to her, can you give me some water to drink? And then, of course, a conversation ensues. And the Lord, this woman comes to the well not realizing that she had a need. She didn't know she had a need. But she came to this well to draw water for her daily needs. And the Lord said, ah, can you give me some water to drink? She said, sir, you don't have a bucket to draw it. And also, you know, the well is deep. But Jesus said, lady, if you know who it is that is sitting by this well, you would have asked him water to drink. And he would have given you waters of life. He would have given you waters not from this well, but from the wells of life. Waters that when you drink of it, you shall never thirst again. And he actually, as he, he sat there and he talked to her about these things, and he, and he drew out, as it were, the need, the desire, the thirst that was in her heart that she wasn't aware of. She said, sir, can you give me some of this water? He was inviting her to come. He was inviting her to drink. The Lord is inviting you to come. The Lord is inviting you to drink. You can receive the Holy Ghost in this room tonight. You don't have to wait until the service is over. Praise God. You don't have to wait until the altar call comes. But you can receive it in this room tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. Lord, give me some. And the Lord said, go call your husband. She said, sir, I don't have a husband. The Lord said, yeah, I know that. He goes, you had five and the one that you have is not even your husband. But see, she does the deal. 
What the Lord, it's not that Jesus didn't know her circumstances. It's, it, it's not that he didn't know her life. See, because the Bible says that the word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the dividing asunder of the soul, of the spirit, of the joint, of the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. God knows your heart. Oh, don't, don't try to hide it from God tonight. He knows your heart. He knows exactly what's in your heart. David said, even though I climb the highest mountain, Lord, you're there. I might try to go and hide myself in the deepest ocean. God, you're still there. And he knew exactly what was in this woman's heart. But see, the reason for the question was because God wants you, wanted her, wants you, wants me to be honest and open. Now you can't receive the Holy Ghost with sin in your life. With unrepented sin, you cannot receive the Holy Ghost. That's what he was doing. He was getting her to be honest. He was getting her to be open. He was getting her to open up and repent of her sin. So that he could have given her this water of life freely. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, what is in your heart tonight. I don't know what's going on in your life tonight. You may be in all kinds of situations and, and problems and, and troubles and, and your life may not be as you would like it to have been. But I want to say to you tonight that Jesus is waiting at the well. You can offload your troubles at the well. You can offload your problems at the well because Jesus will exchange the problems for the water of life. I said he'll exchange the problems for the water of life. But you've got to, you've got to, you've got to accept the invitation that he's saying, come, whosoever is thirsty, come. Come, whoever wants to drink, come. Whatever you need, come, come, come. The invitation is out there and you know that God is talking to you tonight. You know that God is dealing with your life tonight. So if I were you, I'd get on the Lord's side and come. Now, there may be those in this room that have walked with God and perhaps you fell away, perhaps for a season, and you can't find, you can't find the refreshing that you need in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is for everybody tonight. It's not just, it's not just uh, for the sinners, it's not just uh, uh, for those uh, uh, that uh, need a refreshing. It's for everybody tonight. We all can receive, but you have to come. You have to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I desire you. Lord, I want you. You must come. You must accept the invitation that God is putting out there to you to come. Come, come. He will continue to call you until you accept uh, his invitation. And it may be that you're struggling. You may have spoken in tongues 30 years ago. And you haven't spoken in tongues in a long time. The reason is this. Is that your wells have been covered over with dirt. The Bible said in Genesis that Isaac began to redig the wells that his father Abraham had dug. And when he dug the wells, all of a sudden, water began to come up out of the wells. Just begin to come up with the well. And then the enemy comes along, the Philistines come along, and when they see the wells flowing, they say, this is our well. 
And so they get their shovels and their spades and they begin to cover over the wells with dirt. And hence, as it were, stifling the flow of the water. Now, I certainly believe, and I don't recall that the Bible said this, but I'm going to say this anyway. That Isaac, I believe, was a meek man. Because when the enemy did this, he didn't fight with them. He didn't try to do anything to get back the wealth from them. He picked up his servants. He picked up his family and said, brethren, let's go on. Life's going to go on. The church is going to keep on moving on. And so he walks and he gets to another place. And there he begins to dig some more wells. And when he began to dig more wells that his father Abraham had dug, that water began to come up out of the wells. Water began to come up out of the wells. And whoa, the Philistines come along, the enemies come along and they say, this is our wells. They begin to claim that which was not rightfully theirs. And, this, and uh, Isaac said, well, okay, you can have it. And he walk away. And he goes along and he begins to dig another well. In the meantime, that well was stopped and nothing ever came out of that well, and it came to a point, uh, amen, where the Philistines got fed up and frustrated, and when Isaac dug another well, they left him when the waters came up, and the waters just began to flow. Can I say to you tonight, that in you and in me, there's a well. There's a well in each and every one of us. And the reason at times we don't feel the Holy Ghost, we don't feel the Spirit of God stirring up in our souls is because the enemy has come along and, he's, and you've allowed him to cover over your wells with dirt. Now it's not that the wells uh, in particular have really dried up. It's just covered over. But you don't feel the stirring. You don't feel the moving. But sin is the dirt that covers up and that stifles the moving of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when you sin against God, what you are really doing, you just chuck it in a spade of dirt. And when you sin again, you throw in another spade of dirt and finally the wells is blocked up. The wells is, let me tell you, that the devil is a liar. The Bible says that he's a father of lies. But there's a thing that he's called, and I think this is the most beautiful word in the Bible, and this word is repentance. And what we need to do tonight is to repent. We need to repent. And this is how we do it. Oh, you might have some malice in your life. There might be a little bit of strife and schism in your life. You've got to pick up your spade of repentance and say, Malice, you get out of my life. And you've got to start digging. Amen. The onus is not on God, but the onus is on me. And the onus is on you to begin to dig that dirt out of the well. Malice, get out of my life. Envy, get out of my life. Adultery, get out of my life and just keep on digging and digging. I call it deep repentance. Deep. But let me tell you something tonight. But if you keep on doing it, just keep on repenting and calling out on the name of the Lord, suddenly you'll begin to see from the ground a little bit of a trickling of water come up here, a little bit of trick, and you begin to feel something stirring in your spirit. A little bit of trickling of water. But when that little bit of water comes, that trickle comes, don't stop digging. Just keep on digging. Just keep on digging. Just keep on digging. The well is in the house. Jesus is waiting at the well. The well is in the house. Jesus is waiting at the well. And finally, Finally, as you begin to dig and dig, the trickle begins to turn into a flow and then a fountain erupts. And then you begin to feel the power of His Spirit. This is the refreshing. This is the refreshing that Isaiah spoke about. Uh, 
Jesus. I was 19 years of age. When I come to the Lord, just at 19 years of age. And uh, just a young boy, inexperienced, immature, stupid. My brother was in church at the time. He used to go to church. He was but just a little more than a year older than I, what I was. And he would come around every time after he came from church. He'd come knocking on our door. And he would come and hassle me and harass me. He said, you need to come to church. And every time I would see me Sunday morning, come along after church, when I see him coming in the front door, I'd duck out the back because I knew why he was coming. He was come to telling me to come to church. And more than, moreover, he, he, you could see, when I was 19 years of age, I was a hippie. I had an Afro-American Afro. And he used to tell me, he say, you know what? The Bible says that men shouldn't have long hair. I said, well, God's not looking at my hair. I was foolish. You know, one day, I said to myself, it's not going to stop coming. So I'm just going to go along with him when he comes the next time. So he comes the next time around and he invites me. He said, you need to come to church. I said, yeah, I'll come to church. Now I only went because he invited me to come. I didn't know, brethren and pastors, I didn't know that I had a need in my life. I didn't know that I was a sinner that needed repentance. See, because I was a good guy. All I used to do was hang out with hippies and listen to rock music. Amen. And walk around with flared bottoms and I thought I was the dude. Amen. Go to rock concerts. Hallelujah. That's what I did. I'm giving you my testimony tonight. As a young person, and you may be in this room tonight, you may be just, um, just like me, but let me tell you tonight, I was a very, very, very quiet individual, a shy person, in the introverted, but I just went to church because I felt like I had no more defenses and I just had to go because he said to come. So I went to church, and this is one time in my life that I don't ever forget. It is as graphic to me today as it was when it happened to me. I went into the house of the Lord and I sat down on the third row on the left hand side in the front on the aisle with my hair, the African Americans. I make sure I made that thing look good. I wanted the girls to look at me. I sat down there and alongside there was the aisle and then alongside there was these young, about seven young girls sitting on, alongside on this side and they were just giggling and giggling. I thought, wow, what are you laughing at? And I sat down in the church and it was, it was an ordinary service. There was nothing special as it were and sometimes we have those services. Now, I didn't know nothing. I, I just sat down, and we sang songs. I don't even know what they sang. But I sat down, and the preacher preached, and I still didn't know what was going on. But when the preacher completed his preaching, and don't ask me what he preached about because I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. I got up from my seat. Jeremiah, with my bell-bottom pants, African American Afro, my, my tight coat. I got up and I started walking down the aisle. Nobody, nobody told me no nothing. I just kept on walking down the aisle. And I got to the front. And in those days, we had a prayer, room to the, a prayer room to the left in the church and a prayer room on the right. And the ladies would go in that side on the right-hand side. And the men would go in on that side. And as I made my way to the prayer room, I saw two fellows following me to the prayer room. And when I got in, one was my brother and another was a brother in the church. And they laid their hands upon me, upon this afro. And they put it out of shape. And they put their hands upon 
on me and they began to pray for me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something tonight. As I sat down, I began to raise. I don't even know what I was doing, church. I began to raise my hands and I said, Lord, if you would fill me with the Holy Ghost tonight. He said, I said, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will serve you for the rest of my life. I kid you not tonight. I kid you not tonight. It wasn't but in moments, some maybe minutes. And I, when I said that, I, I didn't even know I was repenting. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave me the utterance. I began to speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost gave me the utterance. And let me tell you some more. I thought I was a good guy. I thought I didn't need repentance. I thought I didn't need God. I thought I was good enough to get to heaven. I didn't even know there was, that there was sin in my life. I wasn't even aware of that. But I believe it was the Holy Ghost that brought that out. I believe it was the Holy Ghost that let me know that you still need repentance. Because when I raise my hands and begin to call out and just prior to God filling me with the Holy Ghost, I began to feel something move up in me and came out of me. Ladies and gentlemen, to this day, I cannot tell you what it was, but I know, amen, it was something, amen, that was burdening me down, that was pulling me down, that I was relieved of, that I didn't even know that I had. I walked out of the prayer room. On a different level. I was in heaven. I walked out. I'm talking about little me. I'm talking about shy me. I was, I, was, I was in heaven. I was walking. And you know how it is in Pentecostal circles. You know how it is in apostolic circles. When church is finished. You have a group of people standing over here. And another group of people are talking over here. And another group of people talking over here. And everybody's not even too interested about the visitor that came to church. And just got the Holy Ghost. So the visitor went to the group of the people. And said, sir, I won't shake your hand. And I went around shaking the people's hands. I don't even know why I, why I was shaking people's hands. I was shy. I shouldn't be doing that. But it was the Holy Ghost that was in me, that was moving me. Ladies and gentlemen, we need the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your status of life is. I need it. You need it. We all need the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask you to stand tonight. Would the music people come? Praise God. There are needs in this place. And the Lord Jesus has put out this invitation to us. To every individual that's in this place tonight. And He's saying to us, Come, come. If you're thirsty tonight, come. If you need a refreshing in the Holy Ghost tonight, come. If you haven't spoken in tongues in years, come. If your well has been covered over with dirt, come. He wants you that are thirsty to come. Just keep on coming. The invitation is yet and I invite you to come. I invite you to come to this altar tonight to receive the greatest gift of all.